Hi folks. So sometimes it's a bit of a long story. So I'll start at the beginning. I was lying in bed one night reading my book and I noticed that with the bedside light off over here, I could see this page okay, but this side's always in shadow. So I was reading and then I'd be over here and I was over here and then back over there. And I thought, I bet I could make some kind of light that goes above my head, shines down on the page. I know, I've got all these LED strips left over from when I stuck them under the shelves in the office. Um, I could make something out of these and it'd be really good if I made it dimmable so that I could choose different brightness levels. I bought one of these cheap dimmers off eBay, they're about two quid or something, they're actually very good. And I thought, right, I, I'm going to need some kind of angle poise neck so I can point this in the right direction. And maybe some kind of lens or reflector so I can steer the light the right way. And then I thought, I bet somebody already makes something like that. So I did my trawling around eBay and um, I managed to find these lights, which are perfect. Nice big clamp to clip on the headboard. And uh, these lights are actually quite smart. They've got um, a variety of different options. So they've got low and high power levels and you can switch between cool white, warm white or a mixture of the two. So um, I was quite pleased with those. I thought, yep, that's pretty good. Now all I need is some USB power in the bedroom. And uh, yeah, of course, I could have just plugged something into a mains adapter, but then it's sitting there burning power all day long. And really, it only needs to be on for half an hour a night. And to have to remember to switch the thing on at the wall for half an hour a night seemed like hassle. So I thought, well, USB battery bank. And I got this TechNet one, which is actually a really nice battery bank. And you don't have any buttons to press when you switch it on. So you just plug things in and they work. But unfortunately, this thing goes to sleep. It's activated by being moved. And after it's sat on the windowsill for a few hours, it switches itself off. So there's still added palaver in actually getting this light to work. So I thought, I know, I could build my own power bank that's always on and always available. So having had a load of these lithium cells kicking around for years, these are all recycled ones, um, I set about charging them all up, measuring the available capacity, checking them all out, measuring the um, ESR on them, trying to work out decent sets of batteries. And this has wasted many weeks, months of my time. These have been on my workbench since the 12th of December when I made a video about them. But um, I thought I could build a pack out of these. Um, anyway, these cells, with the exception of that pair there, all self-discharge at quite a rate. So I thought, well, perhaps I won't use those cells. But I do have... So I built a couple of little grids and stuck dots of super glue in the middle so they'd not fall apart at any point. And I uh, built myself a nice pack of 10 of these, which should give me round about 20 amp hours as a battery pack. And all that remains is to um, join them all together. Now, the general advice when working with lithium cells is that you should spot weld them with capacitive discharge welding rather than soldering them. So there was a little aside where I kind of went down the route of uh, getting some capacitors for doing this job and uh, getting some really rather large silicon controlled rectifiers to trigger the discharge pulse. These things are 750 amp rated, I think. But I never actually got around to doing that. We're uh, catching up on a story in months in the making here. So in the end, I just used some of these nickel strips that I got off eBay with the intention of welding them and I actually just uh, soldered the pack together. So that was the pack built but the next problem was of course this only gives out 4.2 or somewhere between 3.6 and 4.2 volts. There's no low battery protection on it and there's no way of charging it. So I started working on the next bit. Now, one thing I was quite keen on was to actually have something decent showing me the remaining capacity. 
and uh, I've got an electric shaver with a little LCD on and it lasts for years and years before it actually drains the battery. So I found some of these little panel meters off eBay. They were a couple of quid a piece. They have a backlight, but you can turn the backlight off and with the backlight off, they pull 100 microamps or something like that. So on my uh, 20 amp hour battery, this has got something ridiculous like a uh, seven years it's gonna take to run the battery down. So I felt happy enough running that in a permanent configuration. And I also got hold of a few little boost converters for taking lithium single cell batteries up to 5 volt for USB. So these two are 2 amp rated and this one's actually a full on um, thing for a power bank that's got uh, LEDs on it and a button to switch it on. I didn't realise it had the button when I got it, otherwise I'd never have got it because uh, it's the same problem having to push a button before you can turn the lights on. But that one's uh, 2 amps on that socket and 1 amp on that socket. These ones are a couple of amps a piece. Unfortunately, these ones have a blue LED that's permanently lit and that LED pulls nearly six milliamps all by itself. So on this board, I've just lifted up this resistor here at one end just to disable the LED because it's just a series resistor with it. And with that LED disabled, this thing's pulling around about 200 microamps, 0.2 milliamps. So my next thought was about recharging this pack and I thought, well, since I've got a window above the headboard on the bed, might as well find a solar panel that'll sit perfectly on the windowsill. So this was chosen purely on the width of this panel being less than the width of the windowsill. This is a 10 watt panel. It was, I don't know, 15 quid or something off eBay, 14 quid off eBay. But 10 watt panel knocks out 18 volts, should be more than sufficient. The, the lights I'm running are pulling, you know, a watt a piece for half an hour a day. So a 10 watt panel should mean that pack never gets empty. But of course this panel knocks out 18 volts or so and the pack needs up to 4.2 volts controlled charging. So I bought myself this max power point tracking um, charger board off eBay. Can't remember what it was, about four quid, something like that. But you can set the Voltage that it'll try and maintain the input at, which is 18 volts to get the max power out of those solar panels. You can set the voltage that it'll rise to on the output, the maximum current, and the level at which this little LED turns either red or green. So that seemed like a good charging solution until I actually got the thing and I realized that when the panel isn't charging, when there's no power going through this way, this MPPT circuit will drain the battery in the opposite direction. Um, the eBay listings, listing says it has no anti-anti-irrigation diode and that you need to fit one yourself if you want it not to do that. So I put on this little Schottky diode here, which has got 0.3 of a volt drop across it or so, which does the job, but as we're approaching 4.2 volts on these cells, the current going through that diode is you know, 20 milliamps or so. We get a very, very slow charge when we're at the higher voltage level. So today has arrived one of these little TP4056 charging boards. So these TP4056 boards are quite clever. Um, they will charge the cell up to 4.2 volts fairly rapidly. And then when it hits 4.2, they won't start charging it again until the voltage drops below 4.0 volts. And they've got a couple of little LEDs stuck here, a green one and a red one, red for charging, green for fully charged. So I'm going to get the multimeter on this and try it out without any batteries, just to see if this will stop the reverse current flow going back in the opposite direction. So just measuring the kind of current we'll get flowing in reverse on here. This is the battery negative terminal. This is the positive, and we're uh, about 50 mega ohms, which is pretty damn close to infinity. And this thing's basically not going to let any current flow out of the battery when there's nothing charging it on the input. There we are, we've exceeded what the meter can measure now. So I'll try and work around the camera with this, but I'm keeping the voltmeter because I want to see that. Um, and then I need to drop off these two so I can ramp up this to five and a half volts or so to feed into that little TP4056 board. Oh, while, I'm, while I think of it, I just wanted to show you all this thing. Um, I came up with this idea. I don't know if anyone else has been doing it. I just cut bits of filament and then acetone welded them onto the bottom here, um, squirted a bit more around using the 
three doodler thing just for a bit of extra support and then I heat staked it onto there because these cell divider things are made out of ABS so it's fine to weld ABS onto it with acetone but um, provides a really nice rigid mounting solution that's not going anywhere at all so just really handy trick for mounting little circuit boards on. Well that'll do 5.47 gives a bit of leeway for temperature variations. Oh dear. Um, I got this in and I was just about to give you a demo of it all working and then I got distracted by a question while I was doing this and I hooked the battery in the wrong way around so I've just blown up that little board there. Um, this video will resume after an eBay order and delivery. Well it's about six weeks later now. Um, this board did arrive and uh, I realised these put out rather a lot of heat when they're charging because they're just a, a resistive blocker there so uh, any energy that's not going into the battery is wasted as heat but I did find some alternative ones. This little unit here is a two amp switch mode one and this switches the power through this inductor and is much much more efficient than the TP4056 one um, but with two amps flowing through here it did get a bit hot so I decided to add a little copper fin heat sink that I've soldered onto the back this was just a bit of scrap copper that was kicking around Another change to this pack, I've now got this 8 amp um, it, short circuit protection and low voltage protection circuit strapped across the battery pack and the outputs from it come negative there and positive over here. So if my paddle meter does drain this battery down to nothing, um, this will cut off at about 3 volts per cell and protect the batteries from damage. Zooming a little further out, um, I've taken this panel meter out of its case because it's a lot more slimline without it and it makes it far more convenient to push the button on the back to turn the backlight on the display on and off because it just so happens the button lines up perfectly no problems at all just push the screen and it switches it on and off and the final change I've made I was having a few problems with these particular 2 amp boost converters um, they seem to deliver well at least 1.7 amps without a problem but I found quite a few different devices don't seem to charge up to full power on these. Um, my wife's tablet and my phone all got to about 80% and then they were doing this strange behaviour where the power had come on and off and on and off and they decided they weren't charging. I tried out this 4 amp boost converter which has a continuous output but unfortunately pulls about 30 milliamps with no load on it so uh, dismissed that one. This 5 amp model, again quite a nice converter, can deliver on its specs but again quite a high standby current on it and my final one was this little module which um, I really like. It's voltage adjustable, it can handle the 2, two amps output current. Um, I've tried it on a bunch of devices and it does seem to charge everything properly. It runs kind of a bit hot if you're pulling the full 2 amps out of it but not too bad, just quite a lot of heat in this inductor. So this is now the final look of the battery pack. I've got the 5 volt converter strap there. I've run a couple of wires from here over to this socket. So I've got two outputs on it, a total of 2 amps, but since the lights pull 0.2 amps a piece or 0.7 amps a piece on the brightest setting, um, again well within spec of this converter. So that's basically the battery pack finished. Um, everything done properly, proper spacing on the cells, cooling on my voltage converter, low voltage shut off, um, proper balance charge, not balance charging, but proper charge controller that will take it up to the right voltage. Um, everything appears to work and I've actually run this for a few days testing and yeah it's all good and uh, keeps it nicely charged from the solar panel on the windowsill. So the only thing that I have left to do with this now is make some kind of case for it all and uh, that's the case for the battery and I've got a lid printing at the moment. If you look at these two lights you'll see the light on the left looks more dazzling than the one on the right and this was causing a bit of a problem reading at night because the light had shine on my partner and wake her up. So um, I took some measures on this as well. I tried printing some kind of 3D lampshade arrangements or light guides to fit on these lights but they really weren't very good and uh, had a tendency to fall off because they were just stuck on with sticky tape and didn't really fix the problem. 
And the problem is that the LEDs on these lights are designed with like pretty close to 180 degree projection angle. So I wanted some way to focus the light and send it in the right direction. And I realized these layers of an old LCD screen that were... So we've got a diffuser layer, and then I think this gathers light scattered from an angle and sends it forwards. And then we've got, I think this is a collimating layer or something to send it straight forwards. And then we've got another diffraction grating to get the rest of the light and you'd think that would make quite a significant difference but if you watch the light level here on the desk when I put it underneath the strip lights that run down here see there's really not a huge difference and even turning it at an angle I and mean, it's hardly making any difference at all to the light level on the desk here where my finger is and I'll just show you the side on view all the dazzle from those lights totally gone because the lights now were pointing without with because the lights now pointing down instead of out at the sides so here we have the finished system uh, two non dazzling reading lights solar battery bank I cut the cutouts on the lid in the wrong place I mirror imaged it I need to make a new one of them and a 10 watt solar panel to keep it charged and uh, there we go I should never be without a reading light and it should never dazzle anyone so anyway, um, hope you enjoyed that folks. I'm not suggesting anyone repeat this except the uh, diffraction gratings from the LCD screen on the lights. That's an excellent idea. But uh, the battery bank, this project took me way longer than it should have done. Um, close to six months. Shocking stuff. Anyway, hope you enjoyed this folks and uh, see you next time. Bye.